The woman sighed and bravely lifted the white cloth on the table. Before she could recover, a sobbing sound came from underneath. The man struggled continuously, seemingly seeking help. Addie's breathing became rapid as she abruptly pulled aside the nearby curtain, and what she saw made her heart almost jump out of her chest. These men were also wrapped up tightly with their arms and legs missing. Addie could hardly believe that those sick individuals outside were actually consuming human flesh for their meals, and they were being kept alive by nutrient solution to ensure the freshness of the meat. Addie covered her mouth and ran out just as Tobias came and hugged her. Tobias wasn't surprised by Addie's discovery but smiled. Meanwhile, Inside Philadelphia, Doc and the others found some supplies and returned to the designated meeting point with everyone. Roberta and the others stared directly at Cassandra. Though Max's tone was calm, it carried a hint of anger as he handed over the video for Cassandra to watch, showing the scene of Addie being abducted, and that long-haired man was none other than the motorcycle rider they had encountered before. Roberta says, We knew you knew them before. Cassandra immediately denied, claiming she didn't know these people at all. Max's temper flared up. He directly pressed the gun against her head, threatening her to quickly confess the truth and reveal the whereabouts of those people. Garnett tried to persuade Mac to calm down and gently question Cassandra. At that moment, 10K killed a zombie, but in that split second, Cassandra took off running. She simply didn't want to return to that hellish place. Eventually, they intercepted Cassandra in an underground tunnel. With no other choice, Cassandra confessed everything. She admitted not only knowing them but also being a part of their group in the past. Her words revealed a deep fear of Tobias. Seeing Cassandra in this state, Mac and the others couldn't help but worry, bombarding her with questions about whether they would harm Addie or even kill her. No, not rape, not murder! They don't just kill their victims! It's worse! They returned to the vehicle to discuss their next move. Garnett was still unwilling to believe that those people could actually consume human flesh because once a person dies, the zombie virus takes over their body. But Cassandra told them that Tobias had thought about that too, and that's why he ate live human flesh. After hearing this, they looked at each other in disbelief. Unable to fathom the horror, Murphy, frightened, shouted to leave and abandon Addie, but he was rebuked by the others. They would never leave a comrade behind, Tobias accompanied by his family, was enjoying a dinner, cutting pieces of human flesh. Seeing Addie crying in fear Tobias says in all seriousness, don't look at me like that, I couldn't do it at first either but hunger leaves no choice. In other words, it was no different from the law of the jungle among animals. The man had only come to have fun, but he hadn't expected to get himself killed, and he writhed in agony. Tobias gives the man a backhanded electric shock. After knocking him out, Tobias continues to cut into the man's thigh. Addie felt nauseous but dared not make any move. She was torn about whether or not to accept the meat offered by Tobias. Just as Addie was struggling, Byrne approached and reported that there was new prey arriving. Tobias reluctantly instructed Samuel to clean up the table and prepare to receive the newcomers. As usual, the person who arrived was Garnett. He stood at the entrance of the camp, with his hands raised, and straightforwardly stated that he came here in search of the redhead woman. Who was their friend? Bird shook his head, claiming to have never heard of this person, and even introduced two seductive women behind him, asking Garnett about his preferences. We got a two-for-one special today. Listen, scumbag. I know you got her. You send her out here in the next 10 seconds or a lot of bad shit's gonna start happening. Ooh, tough guy. <laughs> Inside the camp, the people laughed at the threat in Garnett's words. <laughs> 10K had already taken a vantage point, waiting for Garnett's command. Garnett remained calm and continued, stating that this was just an appetizer. If they didn't hand over their friend, the next bullet would pierce through Burns' heart. He dared them to try. Seeing the tense situation, Tobias emerged with Addie by his side. He stated that he could let this woman go, but they would need Cassandra in exchange. Otherwise, they would all perish together. Garnett hadn't anticipated such strong resistance from the other side. As they seemed unfazed by their threats, he had no choice but to hold back for now. However, Tobias didn't compromise because his man had positioned heavy machine guns at higher ground. With a single command from Tobias, Garnett would be turned into a pile of shredded meat. Garnett was unsure of what to do in that moment. Mac, who was hiding nearby, is desperate to help, but Cassandra stops Mac. This situation had arisen because of her, and she decided to take responsibility. Cassandra walked to the entrance of the camp. In this way,
Cassandra traded herself for Addie, despair filled Cassandra's eyes, as she knew she would be returning to a life devoid of hope. To prevent any mishaps, Garnett and his group quickly left the area, Addie was happy to get away. She couldn't imagine what it would be like to be forced to receive guests. They regrouped at the location of the vehicles in Philadelphia. After adjusting their moods, they all got into their vehicles, preparing to continue their journey towards California. Addie stood still, unable to understand how they could just abandon Cassandra like that. Mac quickly approached her and tried to convince her, saying that there was no point in caring about that woman since all of this happened because of her. The rest of the group agreed, stating that Cassandra was just a cannibal and it wasn't worth risking their lives for her. Deep down, though, they both feel a little guilty about leaving Cassandra behind. Now that Roberta supported Addie, the others didn't object any further, but if they were to go back and rescue Cassandra, the threat of Tobias' heavy machine guns was too daunting, they'll be blown to bits before they even get close. Roberta, with a determined attitude, closed the door and then asked 10K, how good is your marksmanship? 10K didn't say a word but demonstrated his skills through actions. Roberta's first step is to contact Citizen Z at the command center. She asked Citizen Z to play loud music on the radio channel, specifically a high-frequency and high-volume type that would drive the zombies insane. Citizen Z immediately agreed, mainly because he was attracted to Addie's charming voice and finally had someone who needed his help. Being alone in the Arctic was incredibly dull. Back at the cannibal camp, Cassandra was brought back and surprisingly faced no punishment. Tobias ordered her to feed her mother. That's when Byrne came in to report that a customer had taken the bait, specifically stating that an exotic woman was needed. No doubt Cassandra will be the only one to receive the new guests. The RV door opened, and an elderly man wearing sunglasses looked at them. Cassandra was surprised to see Doc but cleverly concealed her emotions. It wasn't until the door closed that Cassandra asked Doc what he was doing there. Doc signaled her to keep her voice down and temporarily play along with him, waiting for the right moment for them to escape together. Meanwhile, Roberta and the group found a large speaker to install under their vehicle. The tremendous sound of music immediately attracted the surrounding zombies. About 10 minutes later Tobias and Samuel were outside the caravan. They marveled at how much noise the old man was making. In reality, they were just making noises inside and shaking the car. Just then, Tobias faintly heard the music and ordered his two subordinates to go out and see who the idiot was playing songs. Doc heard the music and knew it was the signal for their plan to proceed. He immediately started screaming, creating the illusion that Cassandra was attacking him. Upon hearing the commotion, Tobias instructed Samuel to rush inside. As they entered the bedroom, they found no one there. Tobias was fortunate to be only shot in the arm. He pinned Doc to the ground. Cassandra burst out and made sure Tobias experienced the taste of electric shock. With Tobias taken care of, they ran out of the RV. By this time, the music was blaring, reaching the sky. Tobias' men were too preoccupied with preparing weapons for the imminent crisis, completely unaware of the peculiar situation here. Three minutes later the ground shook, the car led a swarm of zombies, and the people inside the camp couldn't even think of resisting when they saw it. The machine gunner on top immediately opened fire, preventing the zombies from entering the camp, but at that moment, 10K also found his position and sent him to his death with a bullet that even penetrated the gas pipe behind him. Doc and Cassandra didn't hesitate and quickly jumped into a pickup truck, escaping before the zombies could surround the area. With no further obstacles, the horde of zombies charged straight towards the camp. Tobias, still feeling a bit numb, looked at the approaching zombies and quickly rushed into a nearby pipeline to take cover. As soon as he entered, the food supplies in the pipeline started making noise, immediately attracting the attention of the zombies outside. Tobias anxiously hid among the food, praying that the zombies wouldn't come inside. As the zombies rushed in, his fate was sealed. 30 seconds later, Tobias's screams echoed, and the cannibals were wiped out. Meanwhile, the X-Team had already made their way through the city. After this incident, their bond grew stronger. Cassandra also let go of her guard and truly integrated into the group. Hope my peeps down in the Philly area can hear this. Thought I'd spend some blues to travel by. And to anybody else out there within the sound of my voice, I hope some slide guitar gets you through another messed up day of death and destruction. Everybody out there, whether you're hiding in a cave or running for your life, just keep doing what you gotta do to stay alive. Because in the end, that's the only way we're gonna win this zombie apocalypse thing. Bash them, slash them, bust them, and burn them. Whatever it takes, just stay alive. No questions asked.